Our first guest tonight is a comedian, actor, podcaster, and world-class martial artist who plays the sister of legendary composer Leonard Bernstein in Bradley Cooper's new movie. It's called Maestro. It's in select theaters now and on Netflix starting December 20th. Please welcome Sarah Silverman. <laughs> Now that you're a potential Oscar nominee, is this your new look? Is this, uh, you look very nice. I was instructed to be dressed by others for this. You were dressed and, by and others. Other press, yeah. And this time you listen, you didn't cut the sleeves off the jacket or do anything weird to no, it? No, but I'm wearing a, uh, what is, shouldn't be called a beater, but is. Yeah, right, right. It's offensive to my people to call it Wife that. beaters? Yes. Oh, Italians. No, no, I meant, yeah, yeah, no, you know what I meant. <laughs> He's not. He's not. How are you? What's going on there? What's the, oh, by the way, congratulations! I knew you had a Grammy nomination, which is a big yeah. deal. For, so, like, in the old days, it was for like comedy album. Now it's really just for the audio of your HBO special, right? So it's kind of yeah. like a comedy. Yeah, album. someone you love. It's called it someone came you out love. Max in May, which mm. I was not able to promote because of the strike and because of everything right. going on. Right. And uh, so now I'm starting over. You know, you have to start over after you do a special. That's you right. Oh, you I mean with the jokes? Yeah, because you use them all up and you can't do them anymore. Or no, they're gone. Is that why you have that um, notebook oh, yeah. there? So. Um, oh, do you have anything you can? I I use? don't know. So I have my notebook, but it's rough. You know, you have to start over. You got to disappoint people, and mm -hmm. that makes me brave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really have nothing. Ugh. I don't even know if this is something. This is. This is my impression of a, a non-binary person who messes up their own pronouns. Okay. Okay. I did it. <sighs> we did it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah? That's staying. I have this, that's it. <laughs> I mean, it's so sad. This literally just says, diarrhea and Frank. And then in parentheses to myself, I wrote, more here? <laughs> yeah, yeah you might want to flesh that one out a little bit. I think yeah. Maybe more there. Yeah. Uh, but I can imagine what you were thinking, and uh, yeah, maybe is I think the answer. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. You bought a new house, I know. You're living in that in a home. A like, whole house. For real. Mm -hmm. uh, how's that going? I'm trying to imagine you like in a taking care of a house. It's a lot, right? Well, we have a lot of flies. Oh, um, great. Well, because it's very like indoor outdoor. I see. That's fancy. Uh -huh. So there's it's not flies. The diarrhea. <laughs> no. It's not the diarrhea that you sent over when um, Rory was prepping for his colonoscopy. That's right. I feel like I should I, mention. You know, I didn't remember that. What? Well, I don't want to be presumptuous and uh, just assume people know about our lives, but we dated for a long time. We dated for a couple years a long time ago. Yeah, a long, a lot more than a couple years. And then... Whatever, um, seven. And now, mm -hmm. kind of weirdly, Rory, your boyfriend, your longtime boyfriend, who looks almost exactly like me, by the way, <laughs> is sitting next to my wife there, and who he looks works... looks almost exactly like me. Yeah, exactly like you, yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, Rory and Molly both work here, and uh, so, you know, it's very, I know there's a lot of, you know, we have a lot of interconnection is what I'm saying. Yes. So anyway, Rory is living in the house with you? Yes, he's living in the house. In yeah. the house. You let, it's because I know it's indoor, outdoor. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know where. So we have a lot of flies, and I don't like to kill them because they're just, <laughs> you know, we all love tiny animals until they're too tiny, but I also... <laughs> I just, a long time ago, I learned about flies, that they, their lifespan is only 24 hours. And there's just something so beautiful about it and poetic and tragic, like a whole lifetime in a day. And I was talking to Rory about it, and he was like, are you sure they only live 24 hours? And I was like, oh, why don't you Google it? Because I'm just a girl, what do I know? So why don't you Google it? <laughs> and he was like, sorry. And? Oh. Well, I mean, whatever. I looked it up uh, for shits and giggles, and it, it, they live about a month. It doesn't <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> your, um, your father, Donald, and your stepmother, Janice, uh, oh, are they passed. Here 
Well, no, oh, sorry, they, they're bad. Well, they are here tonight. They passed mm -hmm. away within nine days of each other, which is kind of romantic in like the worst possible way, but also very romantic because they were very, uh, they loved each other very much. And, and you guys were all really, really close. When Janice passed away, they were holding hands and he was still sleeping. Wow. And uh, I remember him saying, like, I don't want to live in a world without Janice, you know, after she passed. I don't want to live without her. And I said, Dad, you know, statistically, you won't. I was trying to cheer him up. <laughs> but I, you know, I didn't think I'd be right. I, this is obviously not the time to say I told you so, but I, <laughs> I did pass away nine days later. And you came by and... and I, did, uh, I came by. It was like a Comedy Central roast. Uh, Jeff mm -hmm. Ross was there, you were there, I was there. It was... Yeah, uh, Jeff came and, and the first... Th everyone called my dad Schleppy. And the first thing he said was, uh, Schleppy, I've got bad news. I don't think you can be my emergency contact anymore. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and then they were very close through. Jeff has a lot of elderly friends. Jeff, it's, yeah. I don't know if it's kink or what, but it's lovely. No. And he is very close friends with this magician, Bernie Shine. Of and, course he is. Yeah. Of and he is. so he introduced him to my parents and they became very good friends. And about a year ago, they went to see Bernie's magic show in North Hollywood. So cut to May, my dad is dying, and uh, we kind of all camped out in their apartment and dueled him into death. It was lovely. But so Jeff FaceTimed uh, Bernie so that he could say goodbye to my dad. And he said, Donald, you know, I'm so sorry. And my dad said, Bernie, your show was so bad it killed Janice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not feeling so hot either. <laughs> he was... <laughs> He was killing so hard, I thought, maybe he won't die, but he did. Yeah, did you guys have, I mean, you, you got to, great thing is you got to spend a lot of time, really quality time together, because he was conscious and uh, at the end and aware. Yeah, it was amazing. He, he, you know, he was, I was on the phone with his doctor and his doctor said, he's gotta be in the hospital, he's dying. And I said, we promised him no hospital. And he said, well, I don't know, I'd probably do the same thing he said. And he's gonna die of uh, uh, liver kidney failure, of kidney failure, and that's like a painless way to die. So I was carrying that in my head when I walked in his bedroom and I was like, Dad, great news. <laughs> and um, it was crazy because, you know, they didn't make a death plan at all, you know, so it's just been a lot of logistics. And, you know, in their defense, they're only 80 and 85. <laughs> but, so it was just so much logistics. Like we, Janice is gone and Dad was about to go and I'm on the phone with the mortuary to like get ahead of it. And... <laughs> He literally, I literally, there was a moment where I was like, Dad, I know you want to be buried, but do you mind being cremated because I got this deal on Janice's plot? <laughs> this is so bad for the Jews, by the way, this story. <laughs> I go, if you get cremated, you can be buried just like three feet above her. And, you know, and he goes, I don't, yeah, I don't care, I'll be dead. I go, oh, you're so easy. Yes, we'll take it. <laughs> it was... Oh, he was the best. He was the best. The best. <laughs> well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to see a uh, scene from Sarah Silverman's new film, Maestro. No, when we no. return, we'll be right back. So glad you to come. Thank you. Come have a bite with us. Oh, I, uh, uh, my God, I, um, I'm getting the train to Tanglewood in the morning. Tangled? Mm. You're going to see my brother. You don't look so surprised. I'm not. I just, I, he didn't mention it. Well, perhaps he was being discreet. My brother? <laughs> I doubt it. That is Sarah Sullivan in Maestro, which is uh, in select theaters now. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, coming material. to uh, Netflix on December 20th. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, you're fantastic in the movie, Thank and it you. must be exciting for you, because for years, people are like, oh, she's a comedian, and then you act in these movies, and people are like, oh, wow, she's a really great actor. And then Bradley Cooper, who, who the hell would have ever guessed he would be a great director? I mean... Oh, my God, he's amazing. I mean, we've known him for a long time, and he was, you know, like a very, like, kind of... I don't know, he seemed too handsome to be a good director, right? <laughs> but he is a great director. 
Uh, incredible, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if this is, but you know, it's. Oh, it, you being, want to talk focus on you and not Bradley? Is I'd rather focus on me, but um, <laughs> no, I, I just don't know if this is like, but usually in movies, you, especially if there's big crowd scenes, it's a lot of like coverage. So it's for as a comic, you're just like, ugh, it's so, sit, so much sitting around, you know? Yeah. Not to complain, you get to be in a movie, but, it, but trust me, you would get, you know, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> It's, he does all the work. He's worked on this for like six years. Every shot, every, how the cameras will move and everything that, we did this huge party scene that should have taken three days. But by the time we get on set, everything's like choreographed. The, the background, they don't have to, like the party goers that are extras, they don't have to mouth their, you know how like usually they have to go like, yeah, they're pretending to talk. Yeah, and also when people pretend to talk, I saw this in like a behind the scenes of The Shining. I'm digressing, but. Go ahead. Um, and uh, Kubrick is telling the, the extras, like, don't really talk, just pretend to talk. And he goes, and don't nod. Because when you pretend to talk, you go like this. But like, <laughs> nobody does that in life. But everyone was able to just talk. He had the greatest, like, sound guy and everything. And, um, and we did it in a, a day, you know? And, and in the movie, I used to tell a joke and that got cut. But instead, there's this, like, moment where he just came over to me and started improvising. So I improvised with him. And then he, he leaves the conversation by saying, I'm going to go take a dump. And I was like, bye. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, we watched the movie last night, and it's in there. I was like, oh my gosh. You play his sister, so that might be something that uh, might be an exchange you would have with your brother, I guess, right? Of course. You, um, oh, did you audition for the movie, or did he just put you right in it? No, I, I auditioned. It was like a. It was like a nine page, it's, it was nine pages of dialogue that was mostly just like paragraphs of dialogue. And I had to put it on a ta whatever tape is, digital. And, uh, you know, you record rec it. Audio recording. What right. do they say now? I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and Rory was the, said all the lines, you know, off camera. And um, actually, this is a scoop because Bradley doesn't know this, but it was so many lines that I, a sound guy friend of mine gave me an earwig. I recorded myself saying all the lines and then I would listen to it. And then as I'm saying one line, I'm listening to the next line and I. That's cheating, I think. It's cheating. It is, right? <laughs> yep. And I got the role. And Bradley had no idea that you, that, that was happening? No, but I don't think he would care. It's the no, truth well, is I... they just, however you get the performance, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, you're, I mean, you argue with him, not me. I had nothing to do with this. Jimmy. <laughs> When you were doing, were you doing this? Were you nodding and going along? Yeah. <laughs> well, I know, I think it's probably like, uh, as the show's airing, it's probably midnight, which means it's your birthday. So happy birthday. Oh. I got you a little something. Uh, what are you doing for your birthday? What's the plan? I always do the same thing for my birthday. I have a, a, a poker game with the same gang. Pizza and, and poker, a, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, this is something that, I'll, I'll be honest with you, this is not the one I got, but I got this for my birthday a couple weeks ago, and I thought it was, I knew it was something that you would really like, so I got you one. Oh and, God, um, and yeah, put on your glasses. I can't, it's like really wrapped. It's not show I know, business it's not wrapped, wrapped where you take a box They did ask me, they off. said, do you want a TV wrap or no, real wrap? And I said, Jimmy. please, we must be authentic <laughs> with every bit of this. Now, what that is, <gasps> you see Ooh. what that is? It's an automatic um, ear. Wax remover. Okay, yeah. so. It will um, remove all the earwax and bits of your brain from your head. Yeah, this is, um, Jimmy knows this is my kink. <laughs> and I can't wait because I'm actually doing this, like, something for Lake Bell where it's an auction of, of we offer things to auction to raise money. Yeah. And um, I'm, my thing is I'll clean your ears. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were going to give them away my present, but uh, oh. okay, good. All right. I told her I was going to bring my tools, <laughs> but it was just going to be my scope and my Q-tips. Now I have this, which is going to be me. Sarah amazing. Silverman, everybody. So she cleans ears. She does it all. Her movie Maestro is in select theaters now. Netflix December 20th. Thank you, Sarah. We'll be back with Molly Bond.